Howdy, y'all. Jason DeLoach, Voice of Nineveh. I wanted to take a minute to talk about the power and presence of the ancestors. Man, I love my ancestors. There are two ways that we can talk about this, and that's the wonder of the age that we live in, is that there is a spiritual way, kind of like beyond, and then there is a scientific way to think about these things that's penetratively deep and the two things actually merge as one even though there's like two overlapping meditations that don't necessarily interconnect they actually reflect each other and they are connected and we can come to understand this so um I'm so sorry, I get really con- like lost sometimes when I think about the nature of the spiritual realm and how reflective it really is, you know. I love it. You pray down here to a, a being, and that being tunes in. You know, there's it's like a telephone, you know. It's like when you're taking a call, somebody else is taking a call. When you're doing a ceremony, somebody else is doing a ceremony. It's so deep and beautiful um, that sometimes I lose my train of thought in there uh, and get back to exactly what it is that I was trying to tell you about. The beauty of this earth walk. No. I'll try this again. Oh, the ancestors. So, yes. God, the ancestors. Thank you, ancestors. Um, they are real. They are real in you by genetic code. That's this path over here. They are real to you by spiritual connection. That's the path over here of understanding. And these paths are both probably interconnected and related and real. Um... Your consciousness comes from and builds from and is related to your physical being and the construct that exists. And that comes from all of your ancestors. You are literally the genetic culmination, your brain, your thought patterns, all these different things of all the genes that have come through your family line before you. And every one of them has put their own personal medicine, their own life alterations, their own piece of consciousness into your genetic code. So you really do represent and reflect them and walk with them every day of your life. Your intuitions are related with their intuitions. Your interests are related with their interests. It may be so many generations apart that you don't naturally see it. Me and my great-grandfather are completely connected, and I'm adopted. And this is craziness, but it is absolutely, irrefutably, beyond question, real. And I was recently talking to uh, a beloved brother. My God, I love this man. And he's a great leader, and a great leader from the church. And he has taught me so much, and he is an unbelievable man. But the church and the development of the church and its consciousness has been arrested for quite some time now. And I'm afraid that the majority of them are definitely the um, the virgins who have not kept their lamps trimmed and burning. Those who are suited to be married to the bride, to this coming consciousness, to this, um, sorry, married to the groom. This coming consciousness that um, when we unify with it will bring union, will bring generation, will bring marriage, you know. Um, between heaven and earth, you know, the ultimate in our lives and in this existence. And so they have not been waiting for this. They have not been training for this. They are not looking into the mysteries. They're accepting what's being told to them, and then they're passing that on. And it's like a big standstill throughout generations. As one generation passes the teachings and beliefs to the next, as they all alter them a little bit by little bit, and by the next thing you know, just as it is written, your religion is nothing but rules taught by men. And this dear brother of mine kind of just seized up at this idea of communing with the ancestors. And it was just amazing because my life has become a life that is lived in communication and before the ancestors, for the ancestors, with the ancestors. When I speak to you and when I'm working with you, if I am, I want to work with your ancestors because I know that they are affecting you here today. And we must purify the physical, the spiritual realm if we want the physical realm to be purified because the physical world is actually manifest from the spiritual realm. And the reason, actually, that there's so much chaos and disorder in this realm is because there's so much chaos and disorder on the spiritual realm. Look at all the religion around you. Notice that the majority of it is sectional, divided, okay, and unsharing one to another. 
and then consider all these people dying over in the spiritual realm, which is simply one. There's no Buddhist heaven. There's no Krishna heaven. There's no Christian heaven. There's just the spiritual dimensions. And there are heavens and hells for sure. But everybody goes to these places. And according to your resonance, you have your place with everybody else that's going through these cycles with us, okay? The... Uh, the great uh, choir, you know, the, the circus of life, my God, it's so beautiful, the ceremony, you know, but of moving between camps, between the physical and the spiritual, um, between incarnating and ascending, you know, uh, ascending and descending. So, dissolving and coagulating. So, as it is, we do these things, and we are our ancestors, we are our descendants. This is a great mystery, but it takes time and reflection. And as you begin to work with these things and just hold space for this, you'll begin to learn. You'll begin to develop your own personal relationship. And the next thing you know, you'll be like me and my friends that have the most wonderful, magical, interdimensional kind of existences. And other people are sitting here having arguments about the stuff. We aren't arguing. We're just talking because your reality and my reality might be different, but they're the same and we're sharing them together and we can accept this. This is part of the mystery. We say life isn't a problem to be solved. It's a mystery to be experienced. And part of that mystery is your connection with your ancestors. You know, there are aversions that we have to things that we know nothing of why. Why do I feel this way about these things? Open up to that. Start to realize that not all the consciousness that's flowing through your being and your brain and through your body is yours you think it's yours because you say yes to it but as soon as you start to make different decisions by elevating your consciousness and then altering your consciousness intentionally you'll begin to sense other things with you and you'll begin to realize that you're not alone and this is important for us as we engage this spiritual dimension because it's um it's supposed to be an interlocking interwoven system, which it is, but I mean, it's, it's supposed to, we're supposed to be consciously living in that way. And this is our time to wake up. So I hope that you have fun holding space for the omens, you know, and uh, receiving these, these communications from your spiritual guides and from your ancestors. And um, I hope that my voice has helped encourage you to this end today. I love you, my darlings. Thank you for doing this with me. Thank you for hearing my voice and giving me this time today. Blessings to you.